Hey, everybody. So my name's Buddy. Um, I work at Sosta, and we have this rum product called Impulse. And uh, so over the last year or so, we've been collecting all this uh, real user measurement data. And we've been doing it at a rate that's actually been increasing week over week. And you know, we were talking about this a while ago, and about how much of this we have, and about how awesome um, HTTP archive is, and it's this great trove of information um, that's, you know, all this synthetic data that's collected about page load times and, and the detail about everything that goes along with that from, I think, the top million Alexa websites, so from all these websites. And we wanted to do something that was similar, um, but using our data set, uh, which is real user measurement data. So I wanted to just take a few minutes with you guys today and share the initial version of that, which we're actually launching today. So if you go to sosta.com slash impulse UX, you'll see this site. And um, like I said, this is sort of, I guess you could consider this a beta. This is our initial cut at this. And our goal is to uh, you know, let this evolve over time. So please let us know. Um, come talk to me or any of the Sosta people today. Or send me a tweet. I'm B Brewer on Twitter. And uh, please let us know how we can improve this and make this a better resource. But um, I just want to take a few minutes and go through a quick tour of some of the interesting findings that we made. Um, so what we did is we looked at about uh, 85 years worth of page load times. So that's people sitting there waiting on web pages to load. And we distilled it down and broke it down into uh, five categories. So you know, looking at the summary, uh, what we're doing here is we're just calling attention to some of the key percentiles. So the 25th, 50th, 75th, 90th, and 99th um, on DNS time, connect time. That's course, for those browsers that support reporting that via navigation timing, um, back-end time, front-end time, and load time. And we're using Boomerang JS to collect this data, which is the open source JavaScript library that powers Impulse. Uh, so that means that we're able to collect load time from browsers, of course, that support navigation timing. But for those that don't, I'm looking at you, Safari, um, then what we do is we uh, actually set a cookie on unload of the previous page and then uh, take the time when the load event fires on the subsequent one. So we're able to feed that data back as well. So then here's a histogram that just shows the overall distribution from 0 to 20 seconds. And then we broke it out and looked at weekend versus weekday. And the thing that I thought was interesting about that is that of the data that we had, it looks like web pages load about 2% faster on the weekend versus on the weekday. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So then we started to take a look at things specific to browsers. So, uh, and this is where I should bring up Safari again. Um, if you look at the median time by browser family, and we looked at this in terms of the load time and then also the front end and back end at the median, you'll notice that it looks like Safari is so much faster than the other browsers. But uh, I'm not so sure about that because with Safari, it's hard for us to get first page load times um, because of the fact that we can't set a cookie on the page on whatever page they were on on the internet before they got to the site that had a rum on it. So I think that tends to overstate the performance. And often when you're looking at RUM data for Safari, it makes it look faster than it really is. And in fact, if you look at the back end time, where the browser cache isn't really a factor the same way it is on front end time, you see that, that Safari, I think, is the slowest, just barely, on back end time, even though it looks so much faster on front end. So if you can actually click up here on these, and you can turn these series on and off. So if we discount Safari, then we see that you know, Chrome is the fastest on load time, the fastest on front end. And Elio, wherever you are, um, you guys are doing a great job because you have the fastest browser at back end time as well. Uh, so then that's at the median, but we can look at everything. So here, this is broken out by percentile, and I can actually just scrub across. So I can see the load times at the fifth, sixth, and you know, all the way down. One of the things I thought was really interesting about this is if you, uh, I think this was the chart. Yeah, if we dis again, if we discount Safari, then um, Chrome is the fastest browser in sort of the general case, so 38, 40 through the median. But then if you go out here in the higher order percentiles, basically everything above 70, then Firefox takes over and becomes the fastest browser. So I thought that was interesting. And then, of course, we looked at geography. Now, we considered the countries that we have the most data for. So we looked at the US here in the UK, um, Canada, as well as India and China. We found that, you know, generally speaking, um, the US was the fastest, US and UK sort of together. Um, India and China were a little bit slower. And then again, we broke this out by percentile. So you can do the same thing. You can scrub across and you can pick any percentile you want to look at and see how those uh, countries sit against each other in terms of performance. 
One of the things I thought was really interesting, however, about China is that while they're slow overall and, um, and on the front end relative to the other countries, they actually had the fastest back end time. I'm honestly not sure why that is. So if anybody has any ideas, we'd love to talk about it. So mobile. Mobile versus non-mobile, we found that mobile devices were generally, uh, you know, web pages loaded on them were about 2.3 seconds slower than on their non-mobile counterparts. That's probably not surprising. Um, we looked at the key percentiles and published them here. And then we looked at connection type. So for user agents that, uh, you know, report this via navigator.connection.type, we pulled that back and then split that out on the key percentiles as well. Um, I'm also not sure why we don't have 4G data here, but for the... Um, the values that we had data for, we published them here. So that's 2G, 3G, and Wi-Fi. And then there's the overall histogram. And then again, like you've seen in some of these previous ones, we have it broken out on every percentile by connection type. So you can scrub along here and, and see how this changes as you move through the different percentiles, both for uh, connection type and also for browser family. So then we can see this here. And also note that, um, let's see, was this the one? No, actually, yeah. So Chrome Mobile is, uh, is the fastest one overall. And then Chrome Mobile for iOS um, is the slowest. So clearly, if you like Chrome, then Android is the platform that you want to run on. Um, and again, you can see the differences between you know, what Chrome has to use on iOS versus what Safari gets to use when you look at the, uh, the load times here. That's mobile. And then finally, we looked at patience. So for patients, we were looking at bounce rate at different load times. So we found, for example, that um, you know, among two and a half second uh, or you know, so pages, the United States had a bounce rate overall of about 26%, and the um, UK at 30. And if you look at five seconds, they were 35, 36%, so tracking together, fairly patient overall. And then the, uh, the least patient countries of the ones that we looked at uh, were China and India. And then we also looked at it to see if there were any cultural differences among people who identify with different browser families. And by the way, these browser families are for all versions that we had data for. So underneath IE is going to be everything from, like we had data for three, obviously not very much of it, but all the way up through 11. Uh, and then all the Firefoxes and Chromes. And you can see this broken out here as well. And then we have it... Um, here over time, there's actually, need to correct the axis on this chart, but the x-axis here is time and then the y-axis is bounce rate broken out by country and by browser. So that's a quick tour of what we have here. Again, it's sosta.com slash impulse UX if you're uh, interested in checking it out. Um, and please let us know. This is something that we want to, uh, to work on over time and hopefully develop into a pretty interesting resource of real user measurement data. Thanks, everybody.